So the first question comes from a lady called Julie Riley, and I know Julie, so she's a tremendous advocate for women and more specifically driving philanthropic efforts to support women. She's the CEO of our Women's Donor Network here in Australia. Now she asks, what's the most powerful catalyst we can employ that would mobilise significant philanthropy beyond, say, a Melinda Gates, who's already on board, to fund initiatives that address gender inequality? Mm. Well, I'm not sure there's just one, uh, but if I were to pick one, I would say to people with lots of money, you know, money is boring unless, <laughs> unless, it, it, you need, yeah. unless it has social meaning. And yeah. why would ever one want to die with money? What's the point of that, you know? And Warren Buffett and others of our uh, good philanthropists here say that, you know, why die? <laughs> right? So I, th I think that we live in a society in which totting up numbers is often viewed as a form of, of superiority, which actually it isn't. And I think people know that. Mm. And, and there are all kinds of proofs of it or evidence, if not proofs of it, because <clears throat> once you have enough to eat and it's a bit, you know, happiness does not necessarily increase. Um, actually, there's considerable evidence that things like child abuse and child sexual abuse, especially, are somewhat more prevalent in families of inherited wealth than in other families, if only because society doesn't intervene. <laughs> Yeah. So if, if we just look at reality, I think it helps. And it is such fun to give away money and see things change. When, when, when Ms. Magazine first started, we were sitting in a little restaurant uh, fixing each other's salaries, you know. So who had children, who, who had to pay rent and who didn't and so on. And when they fixed my salary, they gave me an extra $5,000 besides what they felt I needed so I could give it away while I was wandering <laughs> because they well understood the pleasure of being able to say to some woman who's needs babysitting money or something on the spot, you know. And so, so who did you give it away? Was it just for women you came across that needed it or to an organization? Uh, well, in that case, because it wasn't a lot of money and, and I, to put it mildly, did not need a tax deduction. <laughs> I used to just do it on the spot, yeah. you know, literally if somebody needed uh, babysitting money for some reason, or somebody needed a new pair of glasses or. Petty uh, cash. You know. yeah. 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 Right. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, one of the suggestions uh, Julie had sort of quipped was whether or not, you know, women, we have a lot of power as consumers. Have you ever, or have you given any thought to a gender tick? on products to help drive gender equality. Yes, no, no, no. We, we you know, it, it, I have to say from the Nestle's boycott, do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, the, ne the Nestle's infant formula boycott. We learned how hard it is, you know, because it took us years uh, to make that boycott effective, to organize consumers in a way that was, that was hurtful enough to Nestle's so they, Change their infant formula, which was very promoted in a very exploitative way towards women in agricultural or third world countries, as they tried to make them believe that mother's milk was inferior somehow. You know, uh, and you know, ultimately that that changed. But I think our we should never neglect the power we have as consumers. Mm. It just takes organizing, and now that we have the web, I have to say it's much easier. Yeah. That's for sure.